It melted right through. How everybody thinks he should shear. What are you doing? Are you ready to go? Oh, no, 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 no. Darn it! Not my ideal kind of cardio. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Good morning everyone. I was greeted today with one heck of a winter wind which uh, was directly hitting my finishing barn and we have frozen water lines. Uh, not because I wasn't prepped but because my 60 foot heat cord decided today to quit working. So I've been to town. I've been to the barn two or three times to try and thaw stuff with the uh, heat gun. And then I made the treacherous drive to town and grabbed a new heat cord. So uh, today was not, I was not planning to do this today, but that is farming. <laughs> here is the, uh, the heat tape. It starts here, right above my head where the plug is. It wraps all the way around and down about halfway, not quite halfway. Uh, it's quite a big chunk and unfortunately it's at the beginning so it feeds all the water bowls. So, I mean, it's all thawed out. It's all warm right up to the source, which is good. And I did remember to plug it in this year. Last year I forgot and I blew the corner. <laughs> Actually, I think I've done that more than once, to be honest. If I went back through all the videos, I'm sure you'll see me fixing stuff over here more than once. got the place ripped apart. So I think after lunch, I will start putting in the new cord. So it'll go across here, straight down there. Back at it, I'm just gonna open this up, see what we're dealing with here. Wow, oh, they're always so nice. <laughs> so this is a 60 footer, $110. Yeah, the last one lasted, I think I put that one up three winters ago or so. Maybe it was longer than that. I've kind of lost all track of time and space here. Okay, I guess twist ties need two hands. <laughs> I'm not really sure why this stuff happens to me. I have never had a heat cord get this hot when I'm, like I like to have it on so as I'm putting it on, it thaws the hose and I don't have to wait like two hours after I attach it. And it was getting really, really hot. Like it was burning my hands. I'm like, what is going on? It's 60 feet and I didn't want to get it all knotted up on each other so I just kept it in a loop. So I'm wondering if I read the instructions if I wasn't supposed to do that. But now this cord is ruined, it's a brand new, cord I've got half of it up more than half of it up and look what it did it melted right through here 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 and a bunch here like it melted right through I just read the instructions uncoil the cable completely so that it does not touch cross or overlap on itself never plug in the heating cable while it is coiled or overlaps itself a hundred dollars <laughs> and I have to go back out in this weather oh I have to take that all down again oh I'm an idiot hey kids I'm back oh they're so quiet now this must be uh when they rest in the afternoon it's so quiet they're obviously not uh calling out for water but there's a few standing by the bowl you're never gonna believe this. I plugged in the original cord again, like my first one that I unplugged. It's working. I've spent over $200 on cords today. And I think, I think all it was is it was just in a timeout. I think it worked the whole time. I'm glad I didn't throw this out, but I am really disgusted with myself and I'm really glad I don't pay myself by the hour.
so I took so long fixing this thing and putting it all back together that uh, the water bowls thawed all on their own. I did give these lambs some entertainment today, so that's good. I'll just show myself out. Okay. Good morning. It is uh, Friday and it's also shearing day. So we are just waiting for Charlie. Yeah, these lovely ladies that are pregnant. So this is Marge's group, Large Marge. Who else is in this group? Popcorn. Uh, Billy's mom. This is like, these are my girls. This is my group. And also the group of uh, ewe lambs that were born last September and they're in the way back pen. So I gotta figure out some logistics before Charlie gets here um, because I've got all these breeding groups kind of in the way. So that was poor planning. When I'm usually trying to get these ewes over to the handling system here, I usually bring them up the, uh, the alley and in and around, but we get this all set up for Charlie here, so I don't really want to block that up. So I somehow got to get them up and around into where those uh, breeding pens are. I actually uh, delayed shearing until this Friday because long range, the weather looked like it was warming up and tonight's supposed to be like the coldest. We actually don't feed before we shear because Charlie, uh, it's just really hard on them when they're when they're getting handled. Uh, I did order more lice treatment, so we will get back on that. for being able to use both his hands when he shears. He's the most efficient that way, and he's the most comfortable doing it that way. But over this past year, he's been in some competitions and he has learned how to do it with one hand. So he's gonna demonstrate it with one hand instead of his infamous two. And we're gonna use this friendly little black you, I think. He's gonna show us, show us what everybody thinks, how everybody thinks he should shear. Let's see how much sweatier I get. A lot of wool. Look at all the white she's got underneath. She's like me. She's hiding a lot of white hair. Is it harder to balance the weight this way? Um, it just I'm probably just for me because I'm used to doing it the other right. way. Right. You're doing good though. There's a lot of you there too. Can't believe how white she is underneath. Gray.
I'm gonna see if Charlie knows how long he took doing that. Uh, two minutes and 40 seconds. Oh, is it a minute longer? I'll film you doing a uh, doing your normal one. <laughs> so we'll compare. Are you gonna do that one your normal way? Yeah. Okay. Let me get this in. Go. Wrong turn, lady. Okay. Are you ready to go? Just turn around. Go that way. No, 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 no. Morning all, a cold squeaky snow kind of morning. Uh, Carissa just finished doing chores for me because she's a dolly. Real late night last night in the barn. We actually were feeding pretty late last night, which is good because that would have helped those girls combat this cold. It got colder than I had had uh, planned a week ago when I, when I actually uh, put Charlie off. And uh, so a lot of people are gonna be really concerned about these sheep being cold. Uh, so we did our best. We bedded them up really good last night, the whole barn. Fed them around 6, 5.30, 6 o'clock. So their little bellies will be ruminating all night. That would help keep them warm for sure. They let off a lot of, they do heat up a lot. Like the barn heats up when they're, at, when they're actually eating. So that was really good. Um, she said no concerns in the big barn today, but across the road, once again, uh, we are going to be thawing these water bowls out. I'm hoping the pipes are okay and it's just probably the spigot on the actual bowl. So I'm gonna grab the heat gun and work away at 
at uh, fighting this cold once again. Oh, beautiful. I don't think we knew about this. Oh, no, 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 no. Why? Oh, darn it. This always happens on the coldest day of the year. Why is life so repetitive? The pens are dry. Thankfully, it was all uh, aiming for the center alley. So, uh, and the pack is high enough that it's probably dammed the water. So the water didn't get in the pen. So I should be able to just scrape it. I have to do it by hand because I can't get the telehandler in here because I have bales. But uh, I'll do my best to just scrape it all up and then uh, plunk it out the door here, I guess. that not without losing my mind well I have to say this nothing really makes you feel more like a pack rat than when you have to move everything to get water out from every nook and cranny in the barn uh, we're not even gonna attempt where those skits are it's just solid ice under there but other than that, we got the heavy out. The rest is gonna have to just kind of hopefully dry up on its own. Mark's just cleaning up the yard behind me. He helped me get this door open. I wouldn't have been able to get it. It's pretty steamy, but uh, I think we got most of the heavy out of here. The barn is actually warm, believe it or not. I thought it would be frozen solid, obviously, but it was warm enough to pop out that fitting. So what do I know? At least we got our cardio in today. Not my ideal kind of cardio. No, I know. It's Anything sheep barn, kind of nice. sheep barn related is not your kind of cardio. Especially make work projects. <laughs> that was not my make work project. No, not on purpose. No. It's minus 16 outside. Uh, feels like minus 21. And inside this barn, it's minus 2.8. Huge temperature swing from outside to inside if it's a nice sunny day and if I've got lots of pack. And when, when the animals have eight, they give off a lot of heat in the barn. So they're kind of warming themselves. There you go. Minus 2.8 inside. And that's the temp. Crazy. Ooh. I like one of those. Some observations I made yesterday, I kind of took off last night because it was just such a late night. I didn't really pick up the camera once Charlie left. I just wanted to get these ewes fed and get them warmed up. Things we noticed yesterday when Charlie was sharing, you guys likely saw it too on the, on the videos, uh, is there's a lot of, like, it looks like pull marks or bite marks, which I can confirm because I've seen my ewes and my rams literally pull the wool right out of the other sheep's off the other uh, you or Ram's back. Like they're just literally taking chunks out. And yesterday we were watching, I, I showed Charlie cause I don't know if he believed me. I th he's like, you have, you probably just have lice. And I'm like, yeah, I, I think I do. Not me, but my sheep. And fun fact, we can't get the lice that the sheep have. That was my first question to the vet cause that worries me. <laughs> I hate crawly things. And there was a you literally pulling the wool right off another ewe's back in another pen. And the ewe that the wool was getting pulled off of was just standing there and she was like doing this as if the other one was scratching an itch for it. So whether these ewes have this telepathic communication going on, uh, sorry, I probably have Oreos in my teeth. I don't know what this is. <sighs> Whatever. So I don't know if they have some sort of a communication going on, but I think indeed they have lice. The ewes are a mess. They've got, yeah, they've got these bite marks all over them and uh like not bite not bites like there's no broken skin it's just like they look like really pink welts all over their back and uh i was kind of looking around yesterday i'm like where does lice come from is it coming from the straw 
there's been really no new animals for a while in here so I'm like unless they brought it in and I just I didn't get on the lice treatment quick enough maybe the birds brought it in I remember when I was in the chicken barns and we dealt with we dealt with mites a lot I'm wondering if she can get mites because I would imagine birds can carry mites if my chickens used to get it so I just remember that used to be a big issue uh, just as much as lice is for sheep so all things I'm going to talk to my vet about because he's coming next Thursday to draw blood on the on that group actually so they're going to have to go through this so it's going to be a good time for him to see what I'm dealing with um, to see what he thinks about these little marks all over them. So, uh, yeah, we're back on the treatment wagon. I was able to get, uh, a case of pour on. This has to be done again in two weeks. So I'm going to just, while I got you guys here, I want you to see that I am actually putting this in my planner. So, okay. Yesterday's 28th. So, uh, February 4th, February 11th, I will put retreat lice there you go so the wool that we have now this four bags or whatever um it's actually just gonna be in queue for a while because uh the ladies right now are working with the wool that we, we had left over from the christmas launch that was my very first wool launch you guys were amazing and you're so supportive and ever since then i have been getting emails and messages saying you missed out on that launch and you're very upset with me <laughs> so this next I am doing a relaunch, a very, very small one for Valentine's Day. There won't be much wool because there was not much left. Now, I have a, I have a load that's, gonna, that's already been washed that I'm going to be taking to them when I go to pick up the wool that, um, that will be for sale, hopefully, hopefully in time for Valentine's Day. That's kind of the plan. Um, so we will have bigger launches. We'll have a bunch of launches coming up this year. Uh, but they're a very small mill and, uh, I'm not their only customer. So, uh, just be patient with me. And as I learn this side of the business, I'm still, I'm still very green and, uh, but I'm very excited and it's really cool to think of things that you guys might like and love and enjoy. Um, so it's been very, a very good creative outlet for me. So I thank you all for that. And I thank you for your support. I will give you notice when this goes live. I've also got more merch coming. So I'm hoping to, I'm hoping all the stars will align. I'll be able to, to launch everything at the same time. So then if something runs out, you, there will, there will hopefully be something else that might, uh, tickle your fancy. So honestly, you don't have to buy anything because you watching this video is still support. So, um, I'm, I'm just excited to be able to share some stuff that we get to make from these beautiful creatures that cause me Saturday work. Worth it. There was one more thing that I forgot to mention to you guys because I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say anything, but I am allowed because it got, it got uh, announced on Instagram today. So the other thing besides wool that you guys ask for a lot is if Belinda was going to start a YouTube channel. They've been working really hard and they have a brand new baby, but her and her partner Jeremy have created a new farm channel and they're called Rebelstone. That's what they decided to go with. And I believe they are launching their video tomorrow. Tomorrow for me, today is Saturday. So tomorrow is Sunday. I will leave their information in the description below. If you're one of the ones that have asked for Belinda and if she's gonna have a YouTube channel, she has been listening and I have been listening and I have been nagging her, but she went and had a baby. She's very busy, uh, but they have found the time to create this channel, her and Jeremy. So uh, go check them out. I'll have the link in the description. Tell them I love them and I hope you guys enjoy them too. Mm -hmm.